From Channel 4's Eyewitness News, this is your local weather expert, Alert, brought to you by Egan Insurance Agency. All right, good afternoon. Your time just after one o'clock and before we get to the latest advisor from the National Hurricane Center, I want to briefly mention we do have some heavy showers moving through a big chunk of the area, producing some heavy rainfall, some on the North Shore as well. And don't be surprised, these are going to produce some gusty winds here and there, maybe 30 miles per hour. You see they're lifting through some heavy bands through New Orleans down to the Bayou Parishes right now and some lighter showers as you go a little bit further down to the south of the metro. Same story on the North Shore, just not as widespread. So just something to be aware of this afternoon. Here is the latest though. It is a tropical storm and I know our graphics haven't updated. It still says 19, but that should say Sally. Uh, they just upgraded it to a tropical storm with sustained winds of 40 miles per hour gust of 45 and it has slowed down a little bit. That trend that we don't want to see uh, moving west now only at seven miles per hour. That's down from nine earlier today. Notice it is back into or it is now officially in the Gulf of Mexico, I guess right there on the edge and looking at satellite. It is still struggling a little bit, but it's really trying to get that inner core together, which will be crucial for the evolution of this thing down the road. So you can see there the spin in here uh, and kind of all the storms are on the south side and the east side of that center. So still fighting some dry air and shear, uh, but it's trying to become more symmetric. When, so, when a storm is more symmetric, that means it is organizing and it is trying uh, to do that. So something we'll be watching very, very closely with Sally. The hurricane hunters are in there currently. They are about to fly through the center of the storm. Um, um, so it'll be interesting to see what they find, but of course they did upgrade it already to a tropical storm and the hurricane hunters will more than likely just verify that as they go on through. Looking at radar, you can see there what I was talking about. It's got all that dry uh, and shear on the north side with not a whole lot going on up here. The center somewhere in here and you've got all those showers and uh, the heavy, heavy rain stretching back towards Key West. Some locations down here have already picked up 12, 13 inches of rainfall since last night from this band. So moving very slowly off towards the west. So. Everyone wants to know where it's going and what it's going to do. Here is the latest. Of course, we didn't get a track update with this or any changes to the track really because it's only uh, an intermediate update. You see there tropical storm still as we go throughout this afternoon and evening continuing to organize as it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. That's by tomorrow morning at eight o'clock as we go into tomorrow night here Monday morning here. But notice the distance in between these icons is getting closer. So that means the storm is slowing as it approaches the coast, strengthening as it approaches the coast and becoming possibly a hurricane as we go into Monday as it nears south Southeast Louisiana or South Mississippi, even up towards uh, South Alabama. So it is certainly looking likely like this will continue to strengthen um, the big part of this forecast, and it's quite tricky. And I know we say that with a lot of weather things, but it really is because uh, we need to watch what the core does through today and through tomorrow. If it can really get an inner core together, it could certainly be stronger than this. What we're indicating here showing an 80 mile per hour category one, but we always tell you to prepare for one category above that. So in this case, we would be saying prepare for a category two. Um, we're just going to have to watch and see what it does today with its core. If it can really come together, these numbers could certainly go up. If it struggles over today and tomorrow, that's a good thing. It might not get much stronger than that as it comes towards the coast. But the big part of this is going to be how slow it's moving to. It's moving at seven right now, and it's only going to slow down as it gets closer to the coast. So we're talking maybe moving two three miles per hour as it gets closer and closer to the coast by Tuesday, somewhere in here by Tuesday, and then very slowly making that turn to the north by Wednesday morning and then by Thursday morning only uh, up in southern the Pine Belt area, southern Mississippi. So it's not moving fast at all, and that means it is going to be a big water storm. We're talking rainfall and we're talking storm surge. We'll have to watch for that more on that in a second. But the reason we're thinking this is going to stall out is because the steering currents that are currently steering it are pretty weak and they're only going to get weaker. We have this ridge building into the north of it. That means there's not going to be a trough pulling this thing up. Essentially, it's like a wall. That'll be running into that. It'll slow down by Monday, Tuesday into Wednesday here and then into Thursday. It'll finally swing around that trough. So the big story with this storm will likely be rainfall. Depending on where it goes, some locations are going to pick up quite a bit. Forecasting still uh, the potential on the high end 15 plus inches. Where that falls is going to depend on the track right now. If the track were to come like let's say to New Orleans, the heaviest rain would be from New Orleans going to South Mississippi over into Alabama. That's where we have the 
kind of 10 inch zone here, but uh, generally four to eight inches is what we're going with now. And then notice how quickly these totals drop off. This is going to be one of those storms like we've seen time and time again, where there's a dividing line right over southeast Louisiana, where one part of the, the area doesn't hardly get anything and the other area picks up a lot of rainfall, wind surge, things like that. So that's what we'll have to watch. But there is a potential with all these colors. You can see there that this thing could dump some heavy, heavy rainfall but these will likely move around a little bit depending on what that track and what the center of the storm does. Now, if this becomes a hurricane, like we're forecasting, maybe even a category two, uh, the winds are obviously gonna be a concern. And uh, we're talking, you know, when they could arrive, tropical storm force winds. Here's the earliest or the most likely time frame to see those tropical storm force winds in the area. We'll start along the coast by Monday morning at 8 a.m. You see that red line there. As we go into Monday evening, getting closer to New Orleans to South Mississippi, and then by Tuesday morning on the North Shore going up towards Baton Rouge. So those lines uh, very close together, meaning moving very slowly once again. So we're just going to keep reiterating that with this storm that it is going to be crawling across the region. So looking at the impacts with kind of the different scenarios we could see with uh, Sally as it heads towards us, the, mo the, the current path is what I'm showing here. This would bring high impacts with regards to rainfall, coastal flooding, storm surge, uh, and high winds, of course, right near the center into the east. So talking North Shore, South Mississippi, and then lower totals, um, lower impacts as you get down into the Bayou parishes over towards Baton Rouge Lafayette. Uh, but of course, this is just one scenario. If this goes a little bit further towards the south and west of New Orleans, if this goes down into, let's say, the Morgan City area or even towards Homa Thibodeau, impacts would be greater across the entire area. We would see flooding rainfall. We would see storm surge for all areas here in southeast Louisiana and south Mississippi. The winds, of course, would be an issue and tornado threat would be there as well. Now, there is another scenario that would be better for us if it took more of an easterly track towards maybe Mobile or Florida, the Pensacola area. Our impacts would drop off dramatically. So this would be best case scenario for southeast Louisiana and parts of south Mississippi. Uh, the greatest impact would be probably rain and it'd be fairly low at that. The coast so flooding wind and tornado threat would be very low if it took more of this easterly track. Uh, so just something we're going to need to watch very, very closely. Showing you one of our models um, and just to give you an idea on why this could be pro problematic. I know a lot of people look at this and they say, oh, it's a category one, it's a category two. You know, we can handle that. It's not always about the category because the category only tells you one thing. It tells you what the winds are going to do. It doesn't tell you how much rain the storm is going to drop, and it doesn't tell you a thing about storm surge either. Storm surge is different for every single storm. So as as we go into Monday, into uh, early Monday, notice here's the storm, possibly a hurricane off the mouth of the river. We're starting to fill those outer bands. By Monday, we'll have strong onshore flow pushing into the lake uh, and pushing into our sounds and parts of St. Bernard Plaquemines Parish there. You have northerly flow over in the Bayou Parishes, but water will start to pile up in this part of the storm by Monday. Now, as we go into Tuesday, it's a slow moving storm. This is what, 18 hours later or so, it is still just now getting to land. So from there to there is what it travels in a little over 12 hours. There it is as a hurricane. This would be producing very heavy rainfall. This would be the persistent onshore flow, meaning storm surge, and the storm surge would last for a while uh, because you have that constant onshore flow. It's not moving very much. And then as we go into uh, Wednesday, of course, you're still dealing with the heavy rainfall. So I don't necessarily want you to focus so much on the category, although that's important because we might have to focus a little bit on the winds. Uh, we need to really be concerned more so about the rainfall and the storm surge because of how slow it's moving and the water it could dump and the water that it could try to pile up depending on the track. Of course, everything depends on that track and it's still a little uncertain. So for today, we've got showers and thunderstorms. Today's gonna be a day to prepare if you're doing anything. Sunday's gonna be a day to prepare. By Monday, we might start okay, but it'll go downhill as uh, Sally gets closer to us. And then late Monday into Tuesday, it's probably gonna be rainy, windy, surge coming up, things like that. Tuesday will be the main day. We'll see landfall on Tuesday, somewhere from Southeast Louisiana, maybe over towards Mobile. That's kind of the zone right now. And then as we go into Wednesday, still dealing with the heavy rainfall, and that could potentially even continue into parts of Thursday. So very slow moving system means multiple days of impacts. As I mentioned time and time again, you're probably sick of hearing it. There's uncertainty in the forecast. You need to follow this closely. Uh, and of course, you know, while we're expecting a category one storm right now, we always tell you to prepare for at least one category higher end. Uh, you know, we do expect changes with the forecast as they come along. So that is the latest as of 1 p.m. Of course, we'll have the full advisory coming in at a uh, 
uh, 4 p.m. Alexandra Cranford will have that for you, uh, and we'll see you here for that. But for now, we're going to toss you back to regular programming. From Channel 4's Eyewitness News, this has been your local weather expert alert, brought to you by Egan Insurance Agency.